Okay, welcome back to the second video on this model control of sucral lipid metabolism or lipid metabolism. We'll continue to talk about the second one, glucagon. Glucagon, glu means sugar or glucose. Glucagon to produce more glucose. And then we'll also talk about diabetes mellitus. Now, let's talk about glucagon. Glucagon is needed when we do not have enough sugar, so we need to produce more sugar. What does it do? It acts, oh, it acts on, it acts on uh, the liver, hepatocytes. It converts glycogen to glucose. This step is because it's a glycogenolysis. From glucose, uh, from the fatty axis and amino axis, we will produce or form more glucose. And this step we call it uh, gluconeogenesis. So glucose released from liver and then to make the blood glucose increase to normal levels, we cannot afford to have very low or hypoglycemia because the body's activity needs sugar because our brain needs sugar. If there's not enough sugar, we get into coma position for young we want. Yeah. So we need to control. So in this control, hyperglycemia would inhibit the release of glucagon because we have too much and we don't need that much uh, uh, sugar. So therefore, the glucagon would be stopped because we cannot also at the same time, we cannot have too much sugar in our blood. Otherwise, that would be known as diabetes. And uh, yeah, so glucagon is actually having a very different structure from insulin. So insulin belongs to the family of insulin and insulin-like growth factors. Glucagon is kind of on its own. It has a 28 amino acid polypeptide. It's a polypeptide chain like that. It's induced by hypoglycemia, inhibited by insulin. Uh, a hormone or the protein is known as proglucagon. It has very special functions or multiple functions with other so-called glucagon-like peptide in metabolism. Let's take a look at the actions of glucagon. Glucagon actually is similar to uh, epinephrine that will stimulate glucose production. Glucagon will stimulate psychic AMP in a similar pathway leading to protein kinase to phosphorylase, uh, the phosphorylase uh, B kinase to uh, turn this inactive phosphorylase B into activating or activated phosphorylase B kinase. But this enzyme would break or turn glycogen and glycogen phosphorylase to so stimulate this glycogen phosphorylase, phosphorylase A and turn into glucose 1-phosphate and then more glucose 1-phosphate would be converted into glucose and then that's how we produce sugar. Epinephrine of course is another hormone from our adrenal gland that would bring about fast action of glucose release because when we need more energy to fight or to run or to deal with stress condition or to deal with a burst condition, we need sugar. And then we come to uh, glucagon and glucagon like peptide, the GLP-1. This is the uh, peptide structure of the proglucagon. So it is expressed in the outer cells of the uh, pancreas and also expressed in the neurons and also in the intestine okay and this uh, gene would produce uh, this polypeptide uh, that would be cleaved into smaller portion the glucagon or glycerin or glycerin or this uh, osmotomodulin or on the other hand here we call this MPGF and uh, this MPGF it's called major glucagon fragment. But these fragments include uh, three of these uh, important peptide signals. GLP-1, glucagon-like peptide 1, glucagon-like peptide 2, GLP-2, and also SP-2. So altogether, there are several or a couple of uh, 
of uh, peptides that would be uh, uh, released uh, in the pancreas, it would produce this gene-related peptide, GLPP, glucagon, and also this vector, so GLP-1 and 2, or SP-2, won't be formed unless it's in the intestine. In the insect intestine, glucagon would not be formed, but instead that would be this uh, gestatin, and also this uh, one SP1 linked to glucagon. In other words, glucagon is not functioning in the intestine, or cortisol-notomodulin, and then GLP1, 2, SP1, and also SP2, okay, in the intestine. So they are rather complicated, and now we only focus on a few things, mainly glucagon and GLP-1, because they have more profound effects on diabetes patients. GLP-1 and GLP-2, so we have explained the glucagon, GLP-1 and GLP-2. After a meal, the GI, the gastrointestinal mucosa cells, will stimulate insulin secretion for more glucose uptake and inhibit glucagon secretion. So at the same time, also in the gut, GLP-1 induces insulin and somatostatin, but reduces glucagon in pancreas, so that is the mechanism that represents the chemicals in our gut. GLP-2 exhibits less biological activity as incretin or effects on glucose level in blood. So most of the research now, they are focusing on GLP-1 because it's a more potent peptide. But GLP-2 increases mucosal growth so GLP-2 is actually having more uh, 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 effects on the gut. Nutrient transport, it would reduce intestinal permeability and gastric mobility. Okay, so GLP-1 will have more impact or effects in the GI tract. And uh, we, now there are different treatments because you can see that GLP-1 induces insulin. So recent uh, uh, development of drugs for diabetes patients, they are targeting this, uh, they call it incretin for DM treatment. For example, there are dipeptide peptides for inhibitor because this is the enzyme that would remove GLP-1. So if it's an uh, inhibitor of gryptins or other stacked gryptins that would increase the level of GLP-1, in return would induce insulin. Okay, so that's why, uh, because of the pharmacological usage of this uh, uh, GLP-1, uh, more research are on this, in this area. So this video, we also cover a very important uh, disease uh, relating to uh, glucose control that is known as diabetes mellitus. Of course, uh, you may also search for other information I have already put into the Blackboard site. So, what is insulin and what is the relationship of insulin and diabetes mellitus? Uh, insulin is actually functioning as a hormone to facilitate glucose uptake. So, the relationship between diabetes mellitus and insulin is that diabetes is actually caused by deficiency of insulin secretion or insulin. Actions. So these are two very different concepts. There are two types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, around 10% of the patients will have this insulin dependent or IDDM, insulin dependent IDDM, diabetes mellitus, so IDDM, starts early in life. So it is a genetic problem that the patient could not produce insulin. Okay, so it all depends on insulin. If you give the patient with insulin, the patient will become normal. Okay, it is a genetic disease because it comes out very early in life and could become very se severe. Because if the patient could not control the blood sugar uh, due to insufficient insulin secretion, uh, some are actually caused by autoimmune attacks on the beta cells in the pancreas. So in other patients, also IDDM, they were uh, affected by autoimmune attacks. Okay, so we have to differentiate the different kinds of uh, diabetes patients in order to give proper diagnosis and also proper treatments. 
So therefore, injection of insulin is required to save the patient's life. Type 2 diabetes is that uh, known as uh, long insulin dependent NIDDM. Uh, actually, most of the uh, DM patients are type 2, <laughs> including myself. Now, it's uh, slow to develop with milder symptoms. So insulin is produced, but the cells are not responding. In this patient, we usually come to the conclusion that they have a, a problem of insulin resistance. In other words, their cells, the organs could not sense insulin, causing many complications, and including obesity. And some people say, that, okay, obesity may be the cause and also the effect. And obesity can cause insulin resistance. And this regulation of insulin secretion can also cause NIDDM. So in other words, there are multiple mechanisms of DM2. 90% of the patient uh, would have this uh, disease. I mean, would have this NIDDM. But the total amount of patients uh, leading to this uh, NIDDM could be huge. So in IDDM, excessive glucagon level due to lower insulin level, also reduce the level of uh, this sugar, F26 bisphosphate of BP, in the liver and inhibit glycolysis. And therefore, uh, the uh, uh, gluconeogenesis and uh, glycogen breakdown are also induced. That's uh, usually happening in IDDM. And the NIDDM produces excessive amount of glucose in blood, hyperglycemia, because of the lack of insulin facilitated glucose uptake. So, leading to uh, glucosuria, diabetes mellitus, that is the sugar even found in urine. Okay? I have some friends that they say that uh, the urine is uh, the sugar. Uh, so in the washroom, even ants are coming over and running around if you don't clean up the washroom uh, routinely. Large amount of glucose in blood also cause polyuria, large amount of urine and leading to dehydration and intense threats of polydipsia because the uh, blood osmolarity increase, okay? So therefore, the patient will need to drink more water and then become very thirsty and then uh, leading to dehydration in some other organ. But actually the major problem of the, and the side effects are caused by the DM patients. These are more killing. Killing mean could be lethal. Cardiovascular problem, eye problem, and uh, peripheral tissues problem, kidney failure due to hyper osmolar or hyperglycemia because the blood sugar level is so high so therefore the uh, osmotic pressure is high leading to tensions in the cardiovascular system in the eye uh, in the uh, in the uh, capillary uh, in the eyes in the other tissues and so on so many patients they were found to have cardiovascular problem eye problem or tissue problem like uh, they have the limbs need to be removed before they were diagnosed with uh, DM or diabetes mellitus, even with kidney problems. So we have to be very careful to uh, give proper diagnosis of, uh, of uh, di uh, diabetes mellitus. From WHO, uh, diabetes has become an epidemic. Okay, it's now everywhere. Uh, especially true that in Asian countries and Southeast Asian, even Pacific Islands, they have very high uh, 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 prevalence of uh, diabetes patient. It would have increased uh, from uh, one, uh, 1980, only 108 million, to 422 million in 2014 in the past. Okay, the global prevalence of diabetes among adults over 18 years of age has risen from 4.7% to 8.5% in 2014. 
So many countries with more than 10% of populations, the violence is rising more rapidly in middle and low income countries. The major cause of blindness, kidney failure, heart attack, stroke, Zhongfeng, and lower limb amputation, they are all caused by diabetes mellitus DM. 2012 estimated 1.5 million deaths directly caused by diabetes, and another 2.2 million deaths were attributable to high blood glucose. And this is projected by 2030. It would be the seventh leading cause of death on Earth. So what causes that? Uh, too much sugars, we've been eating too much sugars. Developing into obesity are the main cause and to be brain. So what causes exactly uh, DM2? Okay. So the number of patients are predicted to double in 2025 from 2002. I think the main thing is that we are in a very comfortable condition sedentary lifestyle, so you know, that we don't move, we come out from the door and then we take the elevator, the elevator we go down to the subway and then in the subway you stand still or you sit and then the subway will take you to the place that you need to go to so we don't really do much exercise, leading to obesity, we are all eating good food and uh, a lot of uh, sugar containing like uh, cookies and so on we call this unhealthy diet or junk food. Aging is also a problem because we have an aging population. Some would uh, even link diabetes to pesticides, contamination, and also stress. Okay, these are all the causes of uh, DM2. Diagnosis is pretty straightforward. We have only one test to do the diagnosis. That is known as glucose tolerance test. The cruel growth tolerance test, if you do the biomedical uh, 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 lab, uh, we have one lab on this. Measuring blood glucose level two hours after consumption of uh, glucose. So you are asked to drink sugar. And then two hours later, we check your glucose level. So that's why it's called glucose tolerance test. Normal range would be six, would be, now this is an SI unit. Minimal per liter, six, that is uh, normal range. It's two to seven, it's still normal. If it's higher than 10, definitely it would be a DM. Fasting, plasma, glucose level, if it's higher than eight, it's usually DM. And, but a more accurate detection or biomonitoring of DM patient is to measure the amount of hemoglobin being glycosylated because the sugar is in huge amount in the blood. It would attach to the hemoglobin. So we call this HPA1C detection. Normal people should be less than 6.4% of the hemoglobin being glycosylated. Okay? Or some would say, okay, less than 7%. If it's higher than 7%, definitely it's a DM patient and need proper treatment. Now, so much and so of the research is uh, focusing on 90% of the patients of DM, which are NIDDM. So it's called them uh, insulin dependent because it's not related to the levels of insulin. It's actually relating to what we call insulin receptor resistance or insulin receptance, uh, resistance. Lack of insulin damages beta cell due to autoimmune response developing, and that we call it uh, uh, type 1. Right? So many other genes are actually uh, found associated with uh, DM2 onset. So actually they are not just a single, but many cases, a multiple gene are relating to DM2 onset, especially NIDDM or the type 2. So what is insulin resistance? So in a healthy body, we have glucose uptake glucose intake in the stomach or the gut and then uh, insulin secretion from the pancreas that is the uh, uh, circulation and then the glucose will be stored and used in organs like in muscles for the uh, type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance 
uh, the glucose intake here organ show no response so therefore the blood glucose remain high and then the organs like muscle could not pick up the sugar uh, even with insulin secretion as you can see that the high glucose in blood that's the result leading to type 2 DM and then type 1 DM patient is that the muscle unable to use the glucose so we have uh, glycogen protein breakdown and then due to low insulin production increased glucose in blood and then normally you have this uh, uh, glucose in the blood because not much insulin the much reduced insulin in blood therefore but then the muscle unable to use all the glucose okay so type 2 patient also develop into uh, uh, ketoacidosis and then type 2 diabetes muscle unable to use uh, glucose as well because it's insulin resistance and there's sufficient insulin in blood level and they increase the glucose in blood and then uh, the glucose could not be used so the glucose would be uh, uh, promoted to uh, form a lipid but then at the same time there would be obesity obesity is also lead to uh, uh, insulin resistance okay so uh, the, the the different types of uh, diabetes patient could be differentiated in this chart so I said again the type 1 diabetes uh, uh, insulin is there increase the glucose uh, in blood but the muscle unable to use the glucose they are because they are also glycogen and protein breakdown and enough to supply to the uh, uh, muscle due to uh, low insulin production okay and then uh, for the type 2 sufficient insulin there but then due to uh, insulin resistance the muscle cannot pick up any so uh, the sugar cannot be uh, used in the organ and then uh, obesity and insulin resistance for the case that obesity would also affect this uh, uptake so let's take a look of uh, progression of type 2 diabetes initially we have insulin resistance or acquired obesity or sedentary lifestyle and also in some patients uh, due to aging okay after 60 years of age or 70 or 80s and then they would have uh, hyperinsulinemia high insulin level in the blood compensated insulin resistance or normal glucose tolerance leading to impaired glucose tolerance and then end up having beta cell failure so, so it's rather complicated that sometimes beta cell failure could be caused by genetics and then end up having this type 2 diabetes and uh, genetics of course would have to uh, uh, bring about insulin resistance because the resistance is at the level of the receptors or other insulin receptor related signaling pathway okay so in type 2 uh, patients that increase the hepatic glucose uh, output as well all right because we always thought that we do not have enough sugar and then the sensing mechanism is gone so uh, the slide here abnormalities and manifestations of insulin resistance the left hand side these are the uh, chemical abnormalities right hand side these are the clinical uh, symptoms or manifestations uh, usually uh, the patient will have central obesity, glucose intolerance, hypertension, atherosclerosis, relative uh, first degree uh, 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 type 2 diabetes mellitus, gestational diabetes, uh, polycystic uh, ovary syndrome. In some patients they have polycysts uh, in the ovary and also acanthiosis and like breakage and then uh, biochemical abnormalities in uh, glucose intolerance hyperinsulinemia insulin resistance higher 
try guess right. Low HDL, small dense LDL, endothelial dysfunction, and also increased uh, the plasminogen inhibitor one, inflammation increased uh, the CRP. Okay, so this inflammation increased of this uh, vascular problem. As you can see that the abnormalities are more and more related to triglyceride and also uh, uh, lipid metabolism. So as you can see this in the next slide or the next video we talk about lipid metabolism. So putting this all together, insulin resistance could be caused by genetics or by environmental influence or stress leading to hyperinsulinemia and then the glucose intolerance, increased triglyceride with increased blood pressure, decreased HDL, cholesterol, small density uh, LDL, leading to PAI, one increase, and this would, uh, the plasminogen level increase, leading to uh, coronary heart disease, stage D. So many of the patients, they are uh, uh, having this uh, heart failure problem. Okay, diabetic ketoacidosis. In many cases, we mentioned about uh, ketosis. That is because of lack of uh, sugar, so the liver becomes stuck into this what we call gluconeogenetic or ketogenic stage. We need to produce more sugar. Actually, we have a lot of sugar, but the sugars are in blood. The lack of sugar for lipogenesis in fat cells leading to increase of lipolysis. So we have to digest a lot of lipid. We thought that we do not have enough sugar, so we have to digest a lot of lipid. So the digestion of the lipid will lead to uh, this uh, uh, oxidation. Not all acetyl-CoA going into prep cycle due to the lack of oxaloacetate. So causing the accumulation of acetyl-CoA and leading to ketosis or ketoacidosis because this uh, ketone body that we call acidosis that would damage in the kidney and the heart altogether. So many uh, patients of DM2 must maintain a very low blood cholesterol level, otherwise cardiovascular disease could kill DM2 patients. Okay. So I think uh, at the last slide we have, I did not have that uh, last year, but we I put this up, treatments uh, or drugs for type 2 diabetes patients. And uh, yeah, many patients will start by using these different kinds of drugs. The most common one, of course, is uh, metformin. Metformin will have different names like uh, uh, bucophage and so on. These are more commercial names. The mechanism actually is not fully understood. We only know that this drug would act on the mitochondria, leading to signal pathway to draw sugar from the blood to the cells. So uh, would the, the mitochondria would be affected and then uh, the mitochondria is uh, kind of failing in a sense that the cells might draw in more sugar from the blood so that is the function of metformin the exact mechanism is not fully understood another one uh, is also a very common one it is actually uh, even before metformin is like the uh, sulfonylureas uh, this is a uh, sulfur in the urea, and these uh, come with different names, uh, Gibbsi, and then uh, and also this uh, malitocin, and then these different names uh, work the same as these uh, sulfonyl ureas. They stimulate the pancreas to secrete more insulin. They uh, they are fast acting, and this one is fast acting. Okay. But the duration of the effect in the body is shorter. So the patient needs to have a high consumption of these drugs. And then, this, uh, and then the third one actually like metformin. This is the diazolindinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinidinid
because this enzyme would degrade GLP-1, so this inhibitor would help increasing GLP-1. Another one is known as GLP-1 receptor agonist. So these are the different drugs that would, uh, like for example, Osempe, and that would stimulate GLP-1 uh, receptor. In other words, that would induce insulin, because the function of GLP-1 is to induce insulin. And then the final two, uh, SGLT2 inhibitor, and this would prevent the kidney from reabsorbing sugar into the blood. Now, that, uh, that, in, that is to say that the sugar will be released in the kidney, on going into the urine, okay? So in other words, uh, traditionally, okay, Tom, you can measure the urine level of sugar, but this is not working anymore. Because in this drug, or these different kinds of drugs, they're supposed to uh, inhibit these uh, transporters, and therefore, sugar would not be this a sugar transporter, right? If it's inhibited, then the sugar will be leaked out from the blood in the kidney to the urine. Okay. Last but not least, uh, we are puzzling why we still use insulin for uh, type 2 diabetes patient, because we have enough insulin. So, but these are what they call it more potent insulin. They come into fast-acting or slow-acting recombinant insulin. They also sometimes add with other, uh, like this uh, insulin, uh, glycine or lentils or insulin determiner. They come with different names because they are patent to add on our system to potentiate the insulin receptor. So in other words, uh, the bodies are producing, our body is producing insulin but the insulin is uh, the insulin resistance persists. So what we need to do is to give them some very or more powerful man-made or human-made insulin. Those are uh, uh, recumbent hormone or synthetic insulin, and that could be done in a fast-acting short. Uh, but it's a more reason. It's a fast-acting, so most patients would use. Uh, low or slow acting because fast acting would bring to hypoglycemia so the patient must consult with the doctor with their biochemical data to see what kind of their series of drugs that we need to use I, for as a patient for myself I'm using uh, five of them right now so uh, yeah so these are the drugs available for type 2 diabetes uh, patients okay so with that we stop here and then we will have already revealed glucagon, different complications of uh, diabetes mellitus, and also the treatments and that we have uh, revealed. And let's stop here. The next slide will go into uh, lipid metabolism.